excited to be here with all of you today. Yeah, I'm, I'm wearing Magic Leap One Creator Edition, and I'm especially excited uh, a year from now when we're here together for all of us to have this on, on our heads and be wearing spatial computers so we can actually get rid of these screens and we can have shared experiences where this presentation uh, was personalized for you and that you guys could all see the whale that is swimming around the arena today. Um, I don't know if you saw a tweet, you should uh, you know, go back and look it up. Uh, we did float a whale uh, around another arena and, and we, did, uh, we did do it here as well. Um, and uh, it, it's an incredible experience to be able to have that shared experience, to be able to see that type of scale uh, in, the physical, in the physical world around us. So I'll take this off for now. So I'm gonna spend the next few minutes talking about both Magic Leap and innovation in Florida and what we can do together uh, to take advantage of this uh, complete revolution that's happening in the space of computing. Uh, Dean Bardet um, referenced something very important uh, in terms of the computing revolution that's taken place over the last 11 years uh, with the smartphone. And uh, I've spent the last 20 plus years of my career primarily in the mobile industry and I was at the center, uh, both at Motorola and Samsung, of creating uh, you know, this form of digital computing. It's really become pervasive and immersive and integrated into our lives. Um, and, uh, and it's actually one of the reasons I joined Magic Leap and I'll get, I'll get further into it. It's also very personal for me to be here back with you uh, here in Florida. Um, I grew up here. I'm a product of the Dade County Public School System, uh, K through 12. And the ability for me to come back and be part of something as special as Magic Leap in terms of the transformational nature of what we're doing and, and the kind of ecosystem that it should foster around uh, Florida is incredibly personal and, and gratifying for me to be part of that. And, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to taking that to the next level. So we've chosen this digital lifestyle. It is the, the primary form of computing today with multiple billions of devices, whether they're smartphones or tablets that we interact with for productivity, efficiency, uh, entertainment. 90 plus percent of video is consumed on somewhere between four and six inch screens, not on IMAX, not on 140 inch or even a 65 inch television. And so this has, this is the lifestyle that we've chosen. We love it so much that we practice it on a daily basis. We practice how to run into each other. We practice, uh, you know, we're so focused on this screen, this technology has taken over our lives. Um, it's a value statement, uh, and I think it's incredibly important because the world is ready for a change. It's incumbent upon us to revolutionize and take people to the next generation of computing. What we want is an integrated form of computing, an integrated reality, where digital content lives with us in the physical world and respects the physical world, where we don't have to be obscured from the world around us, where we don't have to be in danger. I walked up these stairs with my Magic Leap One. I didn't trip, I didn't run into Dean Bardet. I was able to interact with him in a way uh, that allowed me to be fully present. And I'll get back into, I'll get into those uh, um, attributes a little bit later. Um, but not just an integrated form of computing, we want to enhance our human abilities. Computing should be a part of our lives to enhance us. Uh, Dean Bardet mentioned uh, the concept of human-centered AI, which is one of our four pillars and North Stars that we're innovating upon uh, at Magic Leap. Uh, and not only that, we want a human input model. We don't want the mouse. We don't want the, the, the interfaces that exist today. We want a natural human interface uh, to digital content and to computing experiences. And it's with that backdrop that our mission is really to harmonize people and technology to create a better, more unified world. It's important that technology play a role in our lives in terms of enhancing us, but it shouldn't be what, what sits between us and the world. It should actually go to the background, enable us to interact with people and to improve our lives in a way uh, where, it's, where technology becomes more unified and we can connect with each other, each other in a way where smartphones and other forms of screens have really placed a boundary between us. And that was one of the reasons I came to Magic Leap was even though I was part of creating uh, some of the mobile industry uh, around the world with uh, smartphones like Galaxy One and Galaxy Two, uh, you know, seeing my kids and not being able to interact with them was uh, you know, an incredible frustration. The fact that uh, you know, we're all buried in our screens all the time and I'm guilty of it too. And so when we're having family dinners, we're forced to put those phones in a drawer so we can actually have human to human connection and interaction. And the next form of computing should actually enable that rather than restrict that. 
so what's the origin of the company? I think Dean Bardet uh, chatted about a little bit about Ronnie Abovitz, our founder. Uh, he founded the company in just west of Fort Lauderdale, where he grew up. Um, in uh, uh, he grew up in Hollywood, but uh, he founded it in Plantation, Florida, and. Uh, um, he founded it in a garage, and then we moved to a dental office, and then to the Design Center of the Americas, and today to our headquarters in Plantation, Florida. Uh, today, we are 1,600 plus employees strong across 18 offices. Carlos Panzini, our head of people, who's in the back of the audience, and I counted them up last night, 18 offices around the world. Uh, of those 1,600 people, almost 1,000 are still here in Florida. We've moved about 500 or so of people from all over the country to to South Florida, mainly from Silicon Valley. And so the ability for us to attract talent and retain talent from all over the country is an important part of why Magic Leap is in Florida and why we're succeeding and why we're thriving. And I think we need to all take advantage of that to continue to bring talent, not just, not just here, but back. You know, I grew up in South Florida. I, I went away to school at MIT in Boston. I've worked all over the country, whether it was in Chicago, Dallas, and, and, and other places. The opportunity for me to come back to South Florida, be close to my family, and help uh, foster the innovation culture of Florida uh, was just so powerful. And, it, and, and it's actually even more personal than that. In 1992, I walked into the doors of the building that we're in today, which was Motorola Land Mobile Products headquarters, uh, and to the Human Resources Department, I said, can I have an internship? I was a freshman at MIT. So my first internship was in the building where my offices are today at Magic Leap. So, I mean, it, there is so much fate and kismet involved in, uh, it, it just made sense. So when, when we chatted, when Ronnie and I got to know each other and I got to meet the senior leadership team, it just felt like home for many reasons for me. And I think that's the way it feels for all 1,600 plus Magic Leap employees around the world. The evolution of computing that we've talked about, you know, from the PC to spatial computing, is one, is one timeline that we're undertaking with spatial computing, but there's also a network evolution of, of you know, 2G networks to 3G networks to 4G networks. Spatial computing unshackles experiences that started spatial to begin with. All experiences were naturally spatial to begin with. When we communicated with each other, we walked up to each other, we shook each other's hand, we looked each other in the eye, we collaborated by building things with our hands. All of those experiences got paradigmed and mapped into 2D digital platforms for efficiency, portability, accessibility. The goal with spatial computing and the, what it enables is to unshackle all those experiences. So people ask me uh, quite often, what can I do to start thinking about spatial computing? In order to think about how to utilize spatial computing, you need to remove all boundaries. Just remove all limitations from your head in terms of human machine interface, in terms of scale and th some of those things, uh, and really start to experience things as they were, as they were meant to be. They were meant to be spatial. And that's, that's the first unshackling that happens. The second unshackling that happens is it, it, through our partnership with AT&T, uh, our integration of 5G over the next few years will enable us not just, just to unshackle those experiences, but to take those experiences anywhere, anywhere in the world that we want to be because we don't necessarily just want to compute at home or in a fixed environment where we have Wi-Fi or high bandwidth experiences. We want to be able to compute in, in the physical space, in the physical world, wherever we want to go. And that's really this evolution of how things come together in terms of both computing devices and personal computing devices coming together with 5G evolution to really enable spatial computing going forward. We have come a long way at Magic Leap since it was founded in 2011. Uh, in 2014, uh, the first prototype of, uh, of Magic Leap was uh, something we called the Beast. It looks like you know, a piece of, uh, uh, of medical equipment where you had to put your chin up to see a floating pixel in the air. Uh, it enabled us to raise a significant amount of funding to be able to show that. Um, but very quickly, in a couple of years, we were able to go to WD3, which, which is tethered wearable, um, and to the device that we launched last August, uh, Magic Leap One Creator Edition. Uh, and uh, it's been, the, the response has been incredible, and we're excited about uh, uh, help having you guys engage with it today and, and growing our uh, creator ecosystem around the world. I think it's important, there's many forms of extended reality, and, and it's important to sort of call out the distinctions of what is different between spatial computing and virtual reality. Virtual reality, which many of you have experienced, is, is immersive. It requires you to put a screen in front of your head. It actually 
uh, obscures you from the physical world around you. Uh, and oftentimes, you, know, you can't wear it for long periods of time. Some people can't wear it at all. Augmented reality overlays the digital uh, world on top of the physical world. But it doesn't necessarily respect the boundaries of the physical world. The difference between augmented reality and spatial computing is that the digital world respects the physical world. So when I, if I were here in co-presence, once you guys all have Magic Leap devices on your head, if I walk behind this podium, I should be obscured, right? I shouldn't just float over the podium. I shouldn't float in front of the podium. The, the digital world should respect the physical world. And that is the power of spatial computing. When we think about uh, the attributes of spatial computing, uh, you know, this is one thing that we codified very early on, which was helping people think through what the benefits and attributes of spatial computing are. Uh, we talked about respect, which is that digital, digital, uh, the digital world needs to respect the physical world, but also the physical, uh, we need to respect the user from a human physiology perspective, from a data and from a privacy perspective. Respect is a really important part of Magic Leap's ethos. Um, from a technology perspective, uh, we talked about smartphones and what you know, the boundaries that it places, but the ability for us to be aware, the ability for us to be present, the ability for us to interact and for the world to interact with us are key attributes of spatial computing. Scale. We, don't, we shouldn't do everything on a 5.5 inch screen or a 13 inch screen. Scale is incredibly important for the experiences around us. With Magic Leap and spatial computing, I can interact with a Saturn V rocket at scale that's five stories tall. Or I can interact with a car at real scale and be able to get behind it, get inside the wheel well and manipulate uh, the design of it. Scale is an extremely important part of the benefits and attributes of spatial computing. Um, furthermore, uh, the ability for us to have persistent experiences. Experiences shouldn't be limited to the screens that are in our pocket. They should be persistent where they naturally belong. If I want to interact uh, with an entertainment experience in my living room, it should persist there. If I want to interact with a cooking experience where I have my favorite chef that's helping, me, helping gu guide me through preparation, that should be able to persist in my kitchen. I should be able to pause it. I should be able to come back to that experience. So persistent experiences are an incredibly important attribute of spatial computing. And finally, sentience. The ability for us to have these experiences in a way where the digital world and the physical world start to come together in a way where it understands me and, and things are intuitive and contextually relevant so that when I walk into the kitchen, the things that naturally I would want to be aware of, which is which knife to pick up to carve something or to, or to cut, a, a, cut a, a, a tomato, automatically presents itself to me. The power of sentience is incredible when it comes to uh, spatial computing. All of these things come together to help us really understand how to take, the, take advantage of the platform and how to move uh, computing forward to this next generation. At Magic Leap, we're very careful, and, and we catch ourselves often. I'll even catch myself sometimes, which is we're not, we don't use the word real world, or the word real world uh, uh, very lightly, because the real world is not synonymous with the physical world any longer. Uh, the real world is digital and physical coming together in perfect harmony, as we talked about, to create uh, the new reality. And that's important because when we do that, when the digital world respects the physical world at scale, um, we will start to actually be able, the human brain will be able to start to interact with it in a way that it's never been able to interact uh, with the digital world before. So, what have we created? Magic Leap One is a very unique device. It's the most powerful computing device um, ever created. Uh, Lightwear um, that I was wearing produces both, um, you know, produces our, our light field, our sound field, um, and uh, and is a physiologically co correct representation um, uh, of the light field. Uh, the Light Pack is a fully functional computer. It's got the power of, let's say, a MacBook Pro in it. Um, and then you've got the control, which gives you six degrees of freedom. Uh, there's a few things I wanted to just touch on. It's the most powerful set of sensors ever created and, and, uh, and enabled in any device. Uh, the device has the ability to see what you see, but also see how you feel and interact with what you see. And that's an incredibly powerful interface with the human body. Uh, that's a natural interface with the human eye-brain system. And it enables us to have much better context, much more natural uh, human inputs to computing. It's one of the slides that I showed earlier. We have the ability to, to get nonverbal communications like head pose or gaze or heartbeat and other types of biomarkers. Uh, we have the ability to use gesture 
uh, hand tracking, direct manipulation, uh, as well as haptics through our control. Uh, we have the ability for the eyes to play an important role in terms of what I'm looking at uh, and the emotional data that we're able to, uh, to gather and, and, and be able to interface with you on. Um, we're able to use voice. Voice is a very natural human input. And then finally, the environment and the geometry and the physical space around us. These are called multimodal inputs, but the most powerful input is actually transmodal, which is the way we naturally communicate with each other. I may look at you, I may gesture, and I may use voice. So all three of those coming together are a transmodal interface. That's the most natural form of computing. And that's exactly what Magic Leap enables, and that's what we're working with the creator community and the development community to start to take the power of, is how do you enable and how do you, how do you enable these experiences using transmodal uh, forms of input? And that's gonna change and revolutionize how we interact with the digital world around us. This is something that we created with the Weta Workshop. Weta Workshop created for us. It's the best representation of all of the attributes of spatial computing, so I wanted to share it with you. Oh, there we go. get a chance to play with this upstairs on the sixth floor behind me uh, and I have lost as well as many people I've lost guests who visited us for hours uh, there's multiple hours of gameplay uh, the team at Weta has created just that entire world that you saw beyond, beyond that portal actually exists they've created this entire world and and uh, and if you're three or four hours into uh, uh, into Dr. Grodbort's, uh, you will, uh, it will ch it's life-changing, the experience that you have with it. So um, I look forward to you guys playing with just even a level today. Um, and so we talked about this, reality not, uh, not being the same as the physical world. Uh, but also reality is not just reality, uh, reality is not just physical plus digital, but it's it, physical plus digital layers. And I'll talk a little bit about that. We call that magic verse. Um, and I'll come to that in a second. But magic verse is one of the core uh, platforms that uh, we're collaborating with the University of Miami on. The University of Miami is our first uh, spatial computing learning destination in our partnership, and we're gonna be creating the Magic Verse um, at the University of Miami campus, which is gonna be incredibly powerful and fun. Um, Spatial computing is built on these four North Stars, uh, sensory fields, which is our human input, uh, input output, which is uh, the wearable computer that we talked about, things like the digital light field, uh, the digital sound field, 360 degree audio to give you peripheral uh, sensing capabilities as well as haptics or touch field. Then there's live stream, because we see what you see and we know how you feel and interact with it, we're capturing a digital version of the live stream. There's only one analog version of live stream, it's what you capture in your brain from your hu human eye brain system from till death, that's your memories. We can now for the first time capture the, the, the human life stream or the digital life stream. And with that comes the incredible responsibility of privacy and data security. The, 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 the life stream is yours and only yours 
uh, to, to control and to own. It's, it's in your hands as a user to decide what you do with it. If you choose to share it with somebody, it's your decision. And that's an incredibly important part of the ethos at Magic Leap. Because we don't have legacy business models that we're trying to preserve, we, get, we made a decision very early on from, uh, from the heritage of the company as a biomedical company that respect for the user is not just about physiology, but it's also about your data and, and, and everything uh, that the device knows about you. Livestream feeds a form of uh, AI that we call human-centered AI, which is the best way to describe it is if, you, if you've uh, watched Iron Man, uh, Jarvis is a human-centered AI. Jarvis is who makes Tony Stark who he is. Tony Stark has a great suit, but without Jarvis, Tony Stark wouldn't be anything. So that is the form of human-centered AI. It's fed by our sensory fields and our live stream. And all of those come together to form something we call Magic First as a platform. The world around us, and I'll use the stadium as an example, Emily Stadium is a physical space. But through systems and through data, we can create a digital twin of this stadium. And once you have that digital twin, you can layer over all sorts of information that sits, whether it sits in servers, desktops, in the cloud, and start to anchor that data, whether it's customer data, whether it's uh, food and beverage data, whether it's traffic flows, you can start to geospatially anchor that data onto the digital twin and onto the physical world. And that enables us to have incredible, uh, incredibly relevant uh, visualization of data, the ability for us to, to manage, control, but also to do simulation. So if I wanted to have an activity in this building, Building. Let's say I wanted to have a concert. I could use these layers, whether it be uh, the transportation layer or the logistics layer, the people layer, uh, the traffic flows, the physical patterns, and start to simulate an emergency response of the stadium. So these layers of Magic First that come together not just uh, enable experiences, but allow incredibly powerful simulations at scale, uh, something that we can't do today with any other legacy platform. Uh, so Magicverse is, an is, is one of the most important ways that our platform comes together um, and enables the future of computing. And I'm going to very quickly sum it up with uh, 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 some just key use cases and platforms to help kind of bring it home, and you'll get a chance to play with it upstairs and see some of these in action. Um, one, of, one of the most important use cases is displays on demand. The ability for me to have multiple screens anywhere where I want them. We've had people who have uh, had a physical TV and, and they've placed an NFL game uh, right next to the physical TV so their son is watching uh, or their toddler is watching SpongeBob and I'm watching you know, Miami Dolphins game uh, or a Buccaneers game. And, and I can now, if I'm, if I'm going to cook something for, that uh, for my child, I can go and that screen will follow me and it'll follow me into the kitchen, I'll cook something, I'll be aware of what my child is doing or what my son is doing, and then I'll go back to, to him or her with, with their meal. And so there's an incredibly powerful capability in terms of screen replacement and screens on demand. It's just not multiple screens, but sizing screens to where you need them and, and where they should reside in the physical spaces around you. Uh, immersive gaming and entertainment using these platforms such as uh, our LuminOS um, or Unity or Unreal as development platforms. So we've, we've seen uh, organizations like Angry Birds uh, uh, very quickly with, with development tools that they're used to in, in less than two week period be able to develop a spatial version of Angry Birds that has gotten incredible reviews. Um, the web unboxed, our Helio browser is an incredibly powerful platform. There's no reason that the web should be locked to 2D screens anymore. So we have partnerships with companies like uh, Wayfair uh, and others that allow us to bring shopping home immersively, the ability for you to place furniture at scale in your home and see how it, how it fits and how it, how it sizes and how it uh, matches other pieces of furniture. So the web should become unboxed and become three-dimensional. That's where it deserves to be. That's how we shop naturally. I mean, and if we could always go to a store, uh, but we could bring the store home, uh, this, the home with us to the store, or imagine bringing your entire wardrobe with you to the store, and you capture your wardrobe, but now you bring it and you can start to match things um, and, and, uh, and see whether or not it complements well. There's a, the, the power of the Helio browser is incredible, and I, uh, I can't wait for you guys to start playing with it. And finally, one of the killer platforms is communication, co-presence, and collaboration. That is naturally spatial. There is no doubt in anyone's mind that communication, collaboration, and co-presence is a naturally uh, it, it is naturally done best face-to-face -face or in some sort of volumetric method. And there's so many great examples of this. Um, we had demos at CES from uh, partner companies that showed co-presence and collaboration at scale volumetrically. Uh, it is such a powerful tool for us to be able to take advantage of. And I've got a couple of visuals here to share as I finish up. Um, 
imagine a, uh, a collaborative space, a learning lab or a conference room at work where you have actual people working in subject matter experts. And now you can invite in guest lecturers or subject matter experts uh, that aren't physically there, but they're co-presence either, as either avatars or volumetric representations to collaborate with you. They can bring in the outside world and through screens and through screen replacement technologies be able to turn the entire wall in any physical space uh, into screens for collaboration and sharing purposes. Bring in uh, the physical world and in situ type uh, applications into the space from a collaboration standpoint, uh, enabled by AI, and then be able to turn something as simple as a tabletop into a collaborative space um, where we can share, manipulate, and, and learn together. So these, this, is, this is an application um, and a visual that's realizable today with spatial computing and Magic Leap. And this is one of the um, examples that we're working on with, uh, um, with the University of Miami as, uh, in partnership. In-home sports immersion. Uh, we have a partnership with the NBA, um, and uh, our partnership with the NBA is, very sp is, is, uh, is incredibly important because live sports is, uh, and we're sitting in a stadium, um, live sports is such an important part of, uh, of spatial computing because live sports are best experienced going to the game. I mean, it's so powerful to be at the game, but uh, the most, power, the most uh, expensive ticket and the most sought after ticket is the ability to sit courtside to watch LeBron James play in a Lakers uniform. But only about 100 people get to pay five to $10,000 to do that on a nightly basis or, or for 41 games that he plays at home. The NBA sees an opportunity to not just, not just make that opportunity available to those 100 people. It should be available to 100,000 people to be able to sit courtside or to be able to sit in a skybox or have, have a sports bar view. And so that's what we're working on with them, the ability to bring the court in a skybox type uh, application into your home uh, and place it on a desktop. Um, the ability for you to have commerce and team comparisons available to your, for you to have multiple games available to you for, for you to be able to toggle through. Um, the ability for you to turn your entire uh, living room or family room into an immersive entertainment experience where you can volumetrically see a screen, see the scoreboard, see the game on the tabletop, uh, and also be able to share it with somebody who's not physically there in a co-present manner. So I can now have a shared experience. Uh, and one of the slides that I deleted, but uh, is, uh, I'll mention, when you take people to places, there is a finite economy. It is limited by capacity accessibility. But when you're able to take places to people wherever they are, the economy is unlimited. And that's an incredible opportunity that spatial computing and magic verse enables. And so I, I want to leave you the call to action. We have a very unique opportunity in the state of Florida uh, to partner together uh, as we create this next revolution of computing. We can build an entire ecosystem around content, uh, around peripherals, around uh, uh, applications that will enable us to really realize this future. So together we could actually create this next revolution of computing, um, which is spatial computing. Spatial computing has arrived. It is ready for prime time. It's not a matter of, of coming soon. We are, we are working on this today and we want to work on it together with you. And most powerfully, it's human. It's a human form of computing. It's meant to enhance us. It's natural in terms of how we interact with it. I appreciate the time today. Thank you. Thank you.